Hi guys, my name is Ivo and I'm from mytestedasp.net. In my previous video, I told you how I'm going to start a new series about entity framework performance tips and what are the most uh, famous mistakes people are, are doing and of course how to solve them. So in my previous video, I showed you the M plus one problem how you can do it in a quite simple way. And in the current video, I'm going to show how you can execute M plus one without even realizing you're doing it with uh, the help in quotes of lazy loading. So if uh, you missed my previous video, you may, it's a good idea, it's a good idea to uh, watch it because I explain what kind of models we are using and here I'm going to just use the lazy loading uh, examples. So what is exactly lazy loading? In Anti Framework 6 lazy loading is enabled by default. In my opinion it's better to turn it off and don't use it at all. It has its values, it has uh, positive sides but they're not that great in comparison to what kind of problems you might hit if you use the lazy loading. So in my opinion, you should turn it off. That's why it's turned off by design in Entity Framework Core. As a matter of fact, I had to turn, on, turn it on to make it work in my examples because I'm using Entity Framework Core 3.0. So how I turned it on, I just installed this package, Microsoft Entity Framework Core Proxies, and I had to call this method, the place where I create my uh, DB context options. So after I register the SQL Server connection string, I had to call use lazy loading proxies. It's a very good idea for Microsoft to not include it by default. So if you're really familiar with the lazy loading and how it works, you may add it and use it only in the place it had in, in the places where it has value. But in my opinion, you should keep it uh, off. So as I said, then framework six, it's already turned on. So you should be a little bit more careful when you're writing your queries. How to uh, use lazy loading if all your properties are turned to virtual ones like this and like this Entity Framework will start making lazy loading proxies for you. And what exactly is lazy loading? Is lazy loading? Lazy loading is Entity Framework will make one query to get your objects. For example, here I'm calling the cats table and I'm asking for all cats which has uh, which have the name, uh, which have the string uh, one in their names. So essentially, if later in my code, I decided that I need the owner of the cat, if I write owner dot name, and if lazy loading is turned off, the owner here will be no, and that's a good thing. I will receive a no reference exception telling me that I need to fetch the owner from the database because the owner is, is actually from another table. But if I have lazy loading turned on, Entity Framework will make a second query getting the owner of that cat, which is quite convenient in some places. So it may be useful if you are not sure what kind of data you need in your queries, but essentially it may lead to a lot of problems like the M plus one problem we talked about in my previous video. So let's take a look what exactly happens with the SQL Server profile when I run this code. So we get the name of the owner, everything is fine. And we can see that it got 
the cat here and then it got the owner so essentially entity framework got the cats with its first query this one so it found all the cats and we have a second one which is hidden we are not making a query directly in our code as you can see i'm just calling a property of the cat object which essentially executes another query which is calling the owner's table for this particular cat and that may be fine in some situations but it may hide a lot of queries for example if you return these objects to another method and another developer which does not take a look where these objects are coming from and he uh, and if he don't realize that these objects are coming from the database and he calls the owner thinking that the owner is already fetched he may get another hidden query without realizing it so let's assume that in one method one developer gets all the cats and returns them that's from the database and everything works fine everything is correct the application is running and in three months another developer has to fetch these cats and use their owner so this developer decides to just for each of the cats and call cat.owner.name without realizing that this owner is going to come from the database so making quite a lot of queries if i decide to get all the cats from my database and call the owner's name and save it to a list this is the time it's going to take for my application remember that i have 100,000 cats with 10,000 owners so the data is not too much but it's not a few cats in the table so it will take some time and the time it needs is 11 seconds to fetch all the owners names of the cats which satisfy this condition here so 11 seconds it's quite a lot and if we take a look a lot of queries executed in the profiler actually there are quite a lot because for each cat I found I made another query it's 11 seconds for this piece of code and if this is part of some web application where uh, thousands of people are making requests this is going to cause a lot of performance problems so first don't use lazy walling don't turn it on but if you're using entity framework 6 and you have a lazy walling enabled by design you should remember that the best option is always use select and never use the lazy walling uh, technique here how to make the same query and get the same data with without the lazy walling and just by using select we should call db.cats.where we should filter the cats and then we can say select cat.owner.name it's exactly the same as here but it's part of the select clause and this will make entity framework be smart and make joins with the owner's table and extract the names directly from the database so when when you want to uh use something from two tables first turn off the lazy loading so that it won't uh, it won't provide hidden queries here and there and then uh and then use select every time uh you make queries i'm i'm going to talk about the select in another video because it's quite important to understand why you should use select always when you're calling the database the first reason is this one here you're calling the database directly and the database will do the job for you if i run the code we can see that i'm getting the same data the owners the owner names 
in less than 11 seconds as a matter of fact a lot less it's part of a second one fifth of a second on my machine and if we take a look at the query which was executed uh, here this is the join which uh, is created by the select so essentially anti framework says get the name property from the cats joined with the owners and filter the cats and of course this query is quite faster so again you should always use select when you're calling the database don't use lazy loading because it contains a lot of hidden problems now if you're an experienced developer then you can turn on lazy loading and use it on the places where it can prove useful that's completely fine but most of the beginners don't understand how lazy loading and anti framework proxies work so they tend to write quite a lot of um, slow code for example this one which creates the assumptions the assumption that entity framework is slow in general which is not the case i have been using entity framework for five years and i haven't got a lot of problems in the matter of time in the matter of uh, fact 99 percent of the time the performance was not caused by entity framework because i learned how to use it and i tried to um, follow the rules so uh, before we finish i would like to thank my sponsors i would like to um, tell that i'm creating open source libraries for the asp.net framework you may already know that from my previous videos and recently a new sponsor joined our family which i'm very thankful current sponsors are softuni smart it and noble hire thank you guys you certainly rock if you want to support my projects if you like them if you uh, tried testing your sp.net core framework and apps for example and if you like them you may support me you may become a backer or a sponsor on patreon on open collective wherever you like and if you like my video contents additional uh, donations are always welcome so let's recap turn on lazy loading if you're a more experienced developer and if you know how to write your queries correctly there is a reason lazy loading exists in the first place it has its positive effects but if you're a beginner or an intermediate developer which is not familiar with how entity framework core works internally you should turn it off until you're used to make select statements correctly uh, until you're familiar how to make efficient queries with entity framework core and then you can turn it on to use it on the places it may bring additional value so that was it for this video stay tuned for the next one we are continuing with the entity framework core performance tips and how not to make stupid mistakes and how not to suck with entity framework core in the meantime take a look at my projects maybe give them a star i will be very thankful and leave a thumbs up <laughs> hit the thumbs up button below and leave a comment about for example the entity framework techniques i'm using here thank you guys and bye